Extreme Outer Limits is presented by Night Force Optics. Precision optics for precision shooting. All right, so, well, this particular deer that we're here, what, I mean, give us your opinion of it. What do you think? I mean, I know from our conversation, I think all of us was like, well, he was at this point at one given time, and now all of a sudden he seems to have blown up. Yeah, he, July 11th, he was a good buck, not a great buck, and I'd say in the last, what, 24, 25 days, he's gotten really good. Just packed it on, huh? Mm -hmm. So is this buck a regular? I guess tell us about where where he is. Like, what's kind of the dynamic? You know, How do you see doing I've, this? The couple times I've seen him, he's been in the same spot. Um, it's a very good glassing location. Yeah. I think if he gets on his feet, we should. There's a real good chance of seeing him. So where are you plan on taking us? How far away are we gonna like? Are we gonna be in a safe zone? And what's that distance? There's a big, kind of a big bowl that kind of leads into a big flat where these bucks like to feed in the morning and night, and that could be 1,500 yards away. So we have lots of game planning. Yeah. But but close safe zone might be four or 500. So we can at least, the only reason I'm asking is not for the shooting aspect, which maybe is where you think I'm going. I'm actually thinking for the looking aspect. So we can really look and peel the I think so. deer apart, you know? Yeah, and there's a couple different high spots to get to. Um, they're about a mile apart. Good. You know, on one spot you can see good into a draw, but the other, you know, the other spot you can't really see. So we can kind of fluctuate between the two spots. Awesome. Half the fun is this right here. Right, that's half yep. the experience. Going out and looking at the deer, that has a whole nother element. And then when you finally take him, okay, that, that is what that is. But the anticipation and everything that comes along with a premium tag, it all starts right here. This is the fun stuff. He's been living outside of that CRP field, kind of on that west facing slope. Okay. Um, kind of more tucked in underneath this point right here. Yep. Um, I think if we get up on this high point, we should be able to see him if he's, if he comes out down there, we should be able to see him. And if he's on that side in the CRP, we'll be able to see him there too. All right, well, you're the boss, we'll follow you. Okay. There he is. He's actually, he's coming right up at us now. This segment is brought to you by the Night Force 5 to 25 by 56 Enhanced ATAC R Rifle Scope. Features a lightning fast 30 minute per revolution zero stop turret, a 34 millimeter tube allowing for 120 minutes of adjustment, and ED glass producing brilliant images and exceptional color contrast. The new Zeiss Victory RF laser range finding binocular provides you accurate ranges and ballistic corrections from 11 to 2,500 yards. A fully customizable ballistics platform, Bluetooth connectivity, and a phenomenal binocular all in a compact and lightweight unit. The new Zeiss Victory RF is EOL's range finder of choice. 
Sweetgrass. It's bad. You think we can get up to the sagebrush so we can get that roll to our favor a little bit for the camera? Backs are good. I can't tell on his fronts. Do they, do they hook hard and that's why they don't look open? Yeah, I did. Yep. There he goes. Just trying to get a feel for his actual frame. So he's got like a, almost a tripod going. He does. A tripod on the right. And then is that another tripod inside that? In the back. So he has a tripod and a tripod. Yeah. So he has a two, a three, a four, a five, a six, seven, and eight. Yes. And a brow. Yes. And then a six on this side. Well, we made a very difficult decision to take a pass for tonight. Um, unfortunately, some of you guys at home are going to watch this and probably change the channel, <laughs> thinking we just passed a crazy, ridiculously big deer, and that might be true. But this is a game of numbers when you have a tag like this, so part of the hunt is going and trying to find the best you can find. We just want to break this deer down a little bit more, we feel like. Since he's buried in on this, on this ranch, we're not going to lose him. Um, so we're going to come back and look at him tomorrow after we've got a little bit more of a feeling what we think about him. But beautiful buck. Worked out well. So we'll see you guys tomorrow. in this group or not. All right, back in the area that we'd left him in last night and no such luck. Um, up over here in the distance, up and over this ridge about a mile, there's some water. Bobby said there's actually water in two spots over this direction and straight over behind us. So just assuming that maybe, you know, he fed all night, went to water. The other thing about it is it, those hillsides will be opposing the morning sun. So it makes sense that he'd be over there. So we're gonna hike out of here, reposition and try again, but strike one. back out here for an evening hunt, which is when we'd spotted this buck last, and we're already turning up bucks, which is good. You know, these days are really, really long, so even though it's hot, the breeze has picked up a little bit. I think it's one of those deals where the deer can only stay down for so long before they gotta get water, and then they just decide to eat a little bit, so we're looking in the same area we were yesterday. Uh, and just waiting for him to come out, but we're kind of hoping he's on that same trend, which is, you know, get up in plenty of time with light, get that water, and get out here. So, got seven bucks over there right now. This segment of Extreme Outer Limits was brought to you by the Extreme Shooting School, hosted by Bob Beck, an information-packed two-day class. For more information, go to ExtremeOuterLimitsTV.com. 
This segment is brought to you by the Extreme Store. For all your brass, bullets, and ammunition needs, head to extremestore.us. He's crossed the road, so what our game plan is, is we're gonna let him get all the way down in that draw and then get up there and then we're gonna circle around and we should be able to circle around and look down. There's some water down there. Should give us a good position of, you know, three to 500 yards out, good, safe, good luck. And if he's what we're thinking he is, probably make this happen. Want him. He's kind of going where we want to be. Is that water more in the back? Maybe he's just going to side hill that thing or something? He might side hill right over the top of the rock pit. Gotcha. You good? Everybody good? All right, here we go. If he looks huge, he's getting shot. Right there in the bottom, right there in the bottom. You ready? Yeah. Hit him back in the guts, guys, sorry. Well, my first shot was bad. I was not ready. It was my fault completely. But that shot was clean. It was good. You got him on camera? You had the deer? Not here. Not here. Okay, sorry guys. It was me. I actually was squeezing on that trigger so hard I pulled the gun and everything, but that got exciting for a second. Uh, he was out there, I don't know, 200 yards, 250 yards. Pretty much done, but he was standing, so I took him down. Man, I just was not ready for that first shot, but enough of the shooting. Big deer, giant deer. So I don't know whether I'm more excited or more nervous, but we're gonna see here in a second. All right, stay with us. Everything was fine, and then I was just getting onto the deer, and the gun went, I went, oh man. I don't know if it was, 
you know what I, I know what it was it's totally my fault but I'm looking at his rack as I was coming in and then it went and I was like that's why I told you guys I hit him in the guts because I knew where the gun was when it went off because I was looking at his antlers not you know what I'm saying not looking at my you spot were trying to make double check and make sure yeah it was totally did you look that's that was the problem so I had him in my field of view and I wasn't paying attention where my crosshair was because I had him in the upper quadrant, you know, not in my reticle lines. And I was looking at his rack and everything. Well, then I was on fire. I don't know. My brain got ahead of one or the other and the gun went. And that's why it hit him in the guts. I thought I said, God, I thought we were maybe going to like set up and look a little bit. <laughs> no. It happened real fast. No. No, usually when the, the switch is flipped, it's flipped. <laughs> it was <So>. flipped. <laughs> This segment of Extreme Outer Limits is brought to you by Benchmark Barrels, the rifle barrel of choice for long-range hunters, competition shooters, and sports shooters worldwide. Ask for one on your next re-barrel or custom rifle build. This segment of Extreme Outer Limits is brought to you by Kestrel Ballistics Weather Meters, the perfect match of long-range ballistics and environment. Get precision aiming solutions for your gun, your load, and your shot. He should be up on that flat right across from us. Oh, right here. All right, well, he's big. We're gonna need to, we're gonna need to clean him up for the camera. So everybody at home, give us a second. Well, guys, we recovered the buck. Uh, what a collaborative effort, right? <laughs> we got, the funny thing is I said it in the truck the other day. I said that the cool thing about this is there are actually three outfitters in the same truck just doing a hunt because we want to go do a hunt. <laughs> but uh, this is the first time uh, in Oregon that I've ever been able to hunt a velvet buck. I suppose archery guys get a crack at them while they're still there, kind of in that first week or so. Week, yeah. But uh, this is kind of the first year or two that they've been, um, well, first year that they've been opening the premium tags in August. They usually go in September. So I got to admit, I, I probably look nervous on camera and I still probably look nervous on camera. And it's not because I don't appreciate and respect this buck. It's because of the unknown of shooting a deer so early, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you have to, just be okay with the whole thing and know well this thing is so unique and so special that we're going to go ahead and just bypass the option of hunting in the rut and when you see a deer like this that you know is going to break 200 and it has all the points i don't know i think the trigger well obviously the trigger flipped i wasn't even ready for the gun to go off i was and i'll just say to home and this is no excuse it was not a good shot but I had, you know, the more reticle, anyway, the way it was, I was looking in the upper and I was, and I was looking at his rack. Well, that puts the crosshair down here. And I think when my brain said, we're going, oh, it went. Instinct kicked in. Instinct, but I wasn't on the spot where I needed to be, but 300 rum with uh, hybrids, it just, it did the work anyway. He just come down the fence and I got another one in him and that was that. But I did get, uh, on that second shot, I got a little buck fever because it was like, oh, it's go time now. I better get him done. <laughs> But what a buck, huh? So, you know, he's full velvet. Uh, he is hard here. You can actually hear it. Um, I think he's tipped out pretty well. Guys, I don't think he was going to go much more, right? We kind of discussed this. I mean, what do you think? Was this kind of done or what do you want anymore? I don't think he would have got much bigger. I yeah. mean, maybe a little bit, not a whole lot. That's right. Kind of done growing. Yeah. So as you guys can see, we've got multiple points. We've got kind of crowns and tripods set in here. We've also got a double brow here, which helps. Um, man, I don't really know where this buck is weak. We actually thought he was a little less on mass than I think he is. Yeah. Um, maybe the velvet helps a little bit, but he does look pretty solid mass. We were thinking shorter on the G2s, maybe a little here, but this one's super strong. Um, I mean, he has everything that he needs to, to break that magical 200 mark. And, you know, quite honestly for Oregon, That's... like you guys kept reminding me, you got to look at this at face value, yes. so to speak. So it's a good hunt. Well, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I'm just kind of in awe of the whole thing, but it is getting dark and we're going to try to get some trophy pictures. So 
Todd, Thank Sheep you. Mountain Outfitters. Yes, sir. We work together, Bobby Hunt, Oregon. Collaborative effort. Good work, guys. No I mean, this is no this is awesome. This is how it all comes together. New friendships, new relationships. It's all good, and a big buck on the ground, huh? Yep. Yes, yes, sir. You know, one of the <laughs> things we talked about is it's it's a 200-inch buck in August, but it's like you want to hunt the rut, but you don't don't pass up a 200-inch buck in August when you know you'd kill him in November. So it's, there's, it's, not, it's, there's a chance you might not even see yeah. a 200 much buck in, in November. 50-50, flip yep. a quarter. And uh, it's a good gamble when you're flipping the switch on a 200-inch buck. So. <laughs> That's right. Well, all right, guys. We'll see you next week. Extreme Outer Limits is brought to you by McMillan Stocks, Benchmark Barrels, Kestrel Ballistics Weather Meters, Night Force Optics, MOA Rifles.